a video tutorial, we're going to talk about how to process stars using a program called Starnet and combining that uh, with Photoshop to improve your images, uh, your stars and your images. So what is Starnet? Well, it's a um, it's freeware. Uh, it removes stars from images with leaving only the background. Um, it's a neural network uh, program. Uh, there's a number of versions. It's, it is freeware, um, and it's a, a PC standalone executable. It doesn't run on the Mac, um, but uh, what I've also found out is that it now is a module for Pix, Pix, you know, PixInsight. Um, I don't use PixInsight, uh, but now I, my understanding is it's, it, it is available. Also, it's open. A, it's um, available as open source code, so you can take it into uh, a development environment like an Anaconda or something like that. It's pretty complicated. If you want to go that path, but if you can, I mean, you can, and if you want to, um, it's available. Um, I will leave the link to the PC executable. Well, all, of all the all the uh, executables um, and sources uh, in the comments below, and there's the URL. So what we're going to use is uh, Starnet today, the PC version, and then uh, Photoshop on the Mac. Um, and then this was, the motivation behind this was a development of a need that I had using Hyperstar and my, um, with my C14. And I've had, I've got some issues with my uh, optical tube assembly, uh, the butt thing used. And I'm not going to get into all the issues I've got, but I've come up with a way of of handling some of the uh, the optical aberrations, you know, beyond what you would normally do for processing. So um, here's an example. What we're going to use today is a Starnet. It's here's the process. There's a process image on the uh, on the uh, the right hand side. Left hand side is the uh, original. It's a um, it's the NG NGC 281 Pac-Man, and it's in the P Hubble palette, the uh, sulfur hydrogen oxygen palette. So as you can see, you're running it through Starnet. You can, it, what the program does is it, it completely eliminates all the stars. And I'll get to how we would use that in a process. You know, some people just like to get rid of the stars, especially with nebula, you know, nebulas, and they're really beautiful just, just with the emission gases showing by themselves. But we're going to show you what we can actually do to improve, you know, the, you know, the basic, you know, the, the, the stars themselves um, in the image. And so here's the, the workflow here is um, um, with the goal of minimal destruction of stars. So there's lots of, you know, star processing modules in, you know, things like Maxim DL and PixInsight and various other sorts of um, programs. You know, deconvolution is pretty common. But one of the, one of the issues you run into sometimes is uh, the stars get... Um, this, the stars start to look, um, um, you know, not round anymore when you start processing these things. And so, um, and for me, what I have is uh, I've got a problem with the optical tube assembly. And I'm using Hyperstar, and it has a tendency to bloat, um, get star bloat. So, I don't know, I've just come up with a, a process to um, kind of minimize, make stars look better. I can have stars, I can add back stars as many as I can. So what we do is we start with a stacked image. So on the left-hand side, this is a pre-processed image. You know, I've stacked it in Maxim DL. You can use just about anything, really. I've done a little bit of Photoshop and Lightroom work to get to get to where it is. You know, it's a, it's a Hubble palette. I don't have the colors right yet, but, you know, for this demonstration, we're just going to, you know, it's going to use it as is. Um, and then on the right-hand side, um, you know, what we're going to try to get, we, what we're going to show is we're going to get to, uh, you know, isolating the stars. You know, we're going to take, actually, we're going to use a one-layer mask, not two-layer mask. Create a star mask. As you'll notice, you know, the image isn't flipped, and it really needs final processing, but we're going to really concentrate on the star processing. So what we have to do is we're going to um, um, flip over to uh, a PC, and so uh, I have a PC, I have a control, I have a couple of PCs in the observatory, I have a control PC there, and that's where I'm going to run Starnet. You have to run it standalone. I'm not going to do a video on that live because it's uninteresting, but I'm going to show you just the steps and the screenshots. So 
<clears throat> StarNet, unfortunately, um, it's a command line interface. So what uh, the first thing you need to do is you download StarNet. It's a zip file. And then um, what will happen, it'll unpack it. And then you'll have uh, a directory called StarNet. Now, when you process everything, you have to have your file that you're processing in the same directory as StarNet. Right, so and then what you're going to be using is the ms dos command. Unfortunately, it can be a little, you know, a little complicated if you're not used to it. Um, you know, some of us uh, have uh, in, pre in previous lives used command line interfaces like in Unix and ms dos. So basically, what you're going to do is you we've um, you know in this case we've taken the um, initially processed image, we put it in the directory of StarNet, and if you look down here, you can see it. It says Oh, wonderful mouse. Here we go. It's uh, users, David, desktop, StarNet. It looks something like that. Um, it's kind of strange here because when I unpacked StarNet, it created a StarNet directory and then a subdirectory called StarNet. So it's what makes it a little more complicated. But, you know, you, get, you have to go find, you know, you have to use MS-DOS, use the, it's the explicit file, you know, um, file directory. Um, you know, and then what you do is you you can just drag and drop the file in there, and then you go ahead and start to process. So once you have your file in there to process, let's go to the next one. Here we go. All right. So so we're going to process the file. So um, here you just have to be really really careful. So the syntax, I mean, what you do is the directory path. That's the directory, and so talked about that in the previous slide, users, David, desktop, you have to find this on your PC. Now this is really important and you really have to be, you know, just, you know, very precise here. Um, in this case, it's a color image, so it's called RGB underscore starnet plus plus dot exe. You have to type it just like that. Um, if you don't, it's not going to run. Then you have the input file, which in this case, um, it's .tiff. So there it is. So you can see it here in the command line. So it's pack, no stars, video, .tiff. Um, and then I, you don't have to give it an output file name. Maybe StarNet will give you one, but I just, I just did this one. I called it pack, no stars, StarNet. And of course, I didn't add the .tiff, but it, it, it processed fine. So that's really important. So you hit that thing, you know, so you, that's the command, hit return, and then it will take a while to process. It's not like right away, but then here you go. Um, and here it is, um, it's finished. I don't know, it takes about, I don't know, 15 minutes to run, maybe 20. And then you end up with this, um, this file. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the Mac in Photoshop and show you how this, uh, how to, how to process that. So we're going to create a star mask now in Photoshop. So here is Photoshop. So here we are. Here's the, uh, this is the file that we processed. Um, and so you can see that it doesn't look terrible, but the stars, there's a lot of star bloat. And yes, my, you, there are programs where you can process the stuff and Pix Inside, I think, does a really good job. I mean, I use Maxim DL. Um, I can process stars there. I'm just not happy with deconvolution. So anyway, uh, we're going to show you a, another technique. You can use just about anything you'd like. So here's the processed image you know, without stars. It looks kind of cool. Um, if you do a lot of nebula um, sorts of work, uh, if you really want to highlight nebulas, it's really cool sometimes just to get rid of the stars and just, just see, the, uh, see the nebula and also actually process you know, go ahead and, and process um, that image, and then you can add the stars back, because which we're, we're going to show you what to do now. So, <clears throat> so what we do is we start with um, the processed image, and we're going to add a star. We're going to make a star mask. We're going to add it back. So what I did is I created, I took this file, and I processed it. I just made a copy. And what I've done here is, you know, I've I've done some curves. I've done some levels. I've kind of darkened it up. I've done some deconvolution, which I really used. I use Smart Sharpen in Photoshop. I'm not going to go through all that, but essentially what I've done here is I've created a better kind of star, you know, star pattern. Um, 
and, um, and we're going to further process that through the mask. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy that, and then we're going to go back to the original, and we're going to create a new layer here. So we're going to go up here, and we're going to say new layer. And layer one's fine. All right, so then I'm going to copy that uh, layer. And as you can see, um, there's the there's the layer, All right? So now what we're going to do, though, is we're going to create our star mask. And so the way we create our star mask is say select color range so and we're going to don't take highlights to say it's sampled colors as you can see here All right say okay um and you know i'm just going to click on a star bright star you know i'm i have fuzziness set to around 17. so you know it it's it it works i'm gonna say okay now here's the trick there's a lot of things you can do here um but what I do is I go to modify, I go select, and I'm going to modify, and I'm going to contract. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to track, contract it by one pixel. You can do two, and that gets rid of most of the stars. It leaves, you know, if you, you, if you use two pixels and you feather with one, um, you know, it, it, it really gets rid of a lot of stars. What we're going to do here is this, I'm just going to contract the stars by one pixel. Now, so now I've selected that, and now what I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to create a mask. So I'm going to create a, a layer mask out of that selection. And once I create the selection, you can see where, you know, I've reduced the, um, you know, I've I've reduced some of the, um, some of the stars, and I've really given the the stars a, a better look. So if you compare it to, here's the original, here's the original, um, and here is the modified uh, version. Oh, sorry. Here's the modified version. So there's original and modified with our star mask, you know, running through the whole, whole workflow of using, you know, a star net. Um, again, so without stars, with the new stars, you can play around with a lot of the um, making a star mask you could use if you use two pixels you're going to lose a lot more stars i don't know i think this is a nice balance you know so as compared to that i think this is a much more pleasing image again this is just a technique i i developed just because i had to um because of my optical tube is issues and some some collimation issues because of the optical tube not because of the hyperstar yeah, I always get that. Okay, so just finishing up here. Um, so the summary, so, you know, use a pre-processed stacked image. Remove the stars with Starnet++, right? And then um, now you create your star mask in Photoshop. And it's really nice because it really, this, it's a non-destructive pro process for the stars. And then, you know, you can take, and then now you can just, you know, final, you can do final processing for your image. So that's, that's, um, I just find it to be, you know, an option for um, processing stars. Uh, next video coming up, uh, because I've got problems with the C14 optical tube assembly, I've purchased a Rasa 11-inch. Um, and I'm going to do a very detailed comparison between the Hyperstar C14, which I really love, and the Rasa 11. And we'll compare image files of the same deep space object, and we'll have a deep detailed features of each each uh, setup. So that'll be kind of exciting for any folks that are considering, you know, a Hyperstar versus a Rasa. Um, and uh, it should be a kind of a kind of a cool video. Um, so anyway, please like, share and follow the channel and um, we will see you next time. Thanks. So here's the uh, final image. I've just added this. Um, it's flipped. And with color corrections, so this is the Pac-Man Nebula um, with, with all the final processing. So um, enjoy.